Dear, I think they're called riot pigs that have the gas grenade launchers. Uh, you can actually snipe them with relative ease because sometimes they just will not run after you. And I usually don't like to use the gas grenades because they're not an instant kill. And also the grenade traje trajectory is kind of eh. But we'll see. Be we'll be seeing grenades more later on. So many beautiful effects. But yeah, I mean, like I said, for right now, the pistol is doing actually a pretty amazing job. It's fairly accurate from long range, and a lot of the like a lot of the pickups right now are pretty impotent from you know great distances. Uh, the shotguns, I will say, if you get up close though, they'll start taking quite a bit of damage out of you. So you know, if you have plenty of uh, pistol or blaster ammo, I should start calling. If you have plenty of blaster ammo, then uh, don't be afraid to waste quite a bit of it sniping things from long range because some things are very cheap in this game, like the laughs and the tits. But yeah, I will say another thing is that uh, I do kind of wish I still had an N64 controller because, yeah, the game is not the easiest thing to control, I suppose. I'm going to use that as an excuse for maybe sucking sometime. Other times, my excuse is just the fact this game is cheap as hell, and there's just some damage that's massively hard to dodge. And sometimes I just forget where enemies are. Thankfully, though, there seems to be there's going to be more of an enemy variety coming up in future levels than some of the other games. It's not going to be, you know. 20 levels of Drac, but you know, Drac will have a cowboy hat or. Drac will have, you know, a toga. It'll it'll actually be different enemies this time. And you do have to actually be kind of careful in this area because that initial, if you just, there's actually a little gap between the vent there and the uh, the ledge. And dropping down off that will take about 30 health off of you, which can be kind of annoying, especially if you're already running low on health. And you may be wondering initially, like, you know, Niggeroth, where you're running into a lot of slowdown? No, the game actually just runs this fucking slow. Like, Duke does not run quickly, nobody runs quickly. The game kind of runs like it's, like, dipped in molasses, which is kind of annoying. Like, it, it kind of makes me wish that bunny hopping helped at all, but no, you actually kind of... You kind of move even slower when you jump through the air, which is fucking amazing, to say the least. But yeah, we're gonna go turn off the electricity. Gonna need to power this bad boy down. Oh, what a devilish ambush! I was not expecting that at all. This should allow access to the subway system. Actually, looking at that uh, box of shotgun shells, it was upside down for some unknown reason. And I, d I don't mean to seem like I am so incredibly down on in this game, but so far, the the Duke Nukem spin-off projects seem to be getting consistently worse and worse, which is quite frightening, to say the least, considering that, you know, developers should have been getting better. Uh, as time progressed with the, with PS1 and N64 technology, I mean, I suppose graphically this game is a bit better than, you know, Time to Kill, but, you know, in the end you just have a lot of wasted space and huge empty open streets and... God, I can't get over how awful those explosions effect look, but, you know, it's, it's to persevere, it's to show you guys out there you know, who are, who maybe are a bit down about Duke Nukem Forever, that it wasn't, uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, it wasn't always terrible jokes and bad gameplay. At some point, it was, uh, it was worse jokes and completely yeah, shitty gameplay. Don't try this but it was all. not FPS bad gameplay, it was third-person perspective bad gameplay. 
I, I will say that this particular level is a bit longer than some of the other levels. But, yeah, uh, as we'll get more and better weaponry, enemies will go down a lot quicker. I will say, there's uh, the pistols could really do to have more stopping power, honestly. But, yeah, their they're only upgrade is the fact that you can dual wield them. Outside of that, they will always stay pretty much at the same power they currently are at. You know, not to say it's bad, but it's not really that great. It's just better in comparison to the other weapons currently because, well, the grenade trajectory, as I said before, is kind of wonky and you'll also blow yourself up or you'll suffocate on your own gas grenade. And until we get the first upgrade, nope, there's another new enemy. It'll be dead soon. It's, it's kind of like a robot drone. But yeah, it's... The, the shotgun, until we get its upgrade further on in this level, just takes a really long time to get off different shots and things, so... You know, just just for the sheer rate of fire and the range, uh, pistol is pretty much the way to go on the first level. Also, I like how they, they somehow messed up Duke's flat top. But that's okay. Hey, look, it's another secret. Yeah, instead of killing the, normally killing the impregnated, I suppose, alien women, the Nintendo Corporation decided instead, you know what, you should probably not murder the, the raped, impregnated women. You should probably save them because they're not raped at all. You know, they're just kind of tied up in bikinis. Oh, all right. What if? But yeah, since we turned off the power that somehow opened the door to the subway, I'm not... I don't even know how that works, but that's okay. Thankfully, we didn't have to completely backtrack through the street shit again. They were nice enough not to force us to do that for a third time. Uh, so they were nice enough to give us a shortcut, I suppose, to the subway. And we're actually getting pretty close to finishing off this level. I think we just have one more secret left, and we do have one additional, additional collectible for each stage. That's actually going to be used to open up a secret stage later on. Ooh, I know, we're all excited for that. But, you know, right now it's just heading into the subway and sniping some enforcers and... I don't know, uh, I will say, uh, we'll actually be seeing later on the, in the level, the gas grenades right now may not seem very dangerous, but yeah, they they do quite a bit. Who wants some? And yet again, unnecessarily referencing other games, especially better N64 games. Really, uh, 3D Realms could just never stop themselves doing that. But yeah, the auto loader is the upgrade I've been talking about for the shotgun. Basically, the unnecessarily unnecessarily long reloading times with uh, with uh, the shotgun have now been pretty much eliminated. I actually don't know what the hell that poster was supposed to be making fun of, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'd be disgusted. But yeah, this is the collectible I was talking about. It's a part of a time machine. You know, because you remember the fact that it's about time travel? I don't. This just seems like uh, run around the city, you know, as some guy in a green shirt. I, I don't even know what they were thinking with this game. It, it just doesn't have any of the Duke Nukem feel that I guess was encapsulated with Duke Nukem 3D. Every other Duke Nukem game just seems to be vague shadows of what they thought the game was supposed to be about. Which was weird considering they made the game in the first place. But it's just some disconnection between developer and customer and the mythos, so... What if Duke Nukem is not the place to discuss that kind of nonsense? Oh yeah, did I mention the gas grenades hurt? Yep, they do. Thankfully we have portable medkits. But actually, this is, right around the corner, is going to be the end of the stage. 
couldn't tell. But uh, yeah, we'll see you next time on more Duke Nukem Zero Hour.